Today I want to talk to you about breaking through secret sufferings. We uh, started last week on beginning to talk about how do we find our health, the healing that we need in our body. And we begin to show how the scripture says that what a man puts in his mouth doesn't defile him, doesn't pollute him. It's what is actually going on in the life of a, any human being. And then it comes out in words. And those words are what defile the human being. Now, I know that in the medical world, the medical world tells us a lot about what you eat and what you drink and what you put in and what it does to your body. Jesus says the real thing that's happening in your life is the world that's unseen. And in many cases, people are suffering in, in this secret suffering. It was, it was a terminology that we heard Sunday, uh, Wednesday night. Uh, one of our friends here mentioned the secret suffering. And I'm like, that's a great title. So we want to break the secret suffering. And so I would just want to give you a little head, like a little background, that we're going to talk about the woman with the issue of blood. But I want you to take note of that as she was pressing in, there was another thing that was happening in the life of Jesus. And there was a ruler of the synagogue of that day named Jairus, and he came to tell Jesus of his great need. And we've been talking quite a bit about this on Wednesday nights, about how miracles are more prevalent in the lives of people who have no other options. Jesus becomes the only option. And so I, you know, I've done all I can do. I've stood where I can stand, but there's no help in any man or any organization. And so we find our help in Jesus. So Jairus comes to Jesus, cries out to him about his daughter on the brink of death. Jesus is going with him, but unknown to everybody else, there was another woman in the scene on top of everybody else who was pressing in on Jesus. There was a woman with an issue of blood. And she, the Bible says she'd been suffering for a long time, 12 years. And so let's pick it up and let's look at what happened in her life. But before we do that, let's, pr let's just take a moment and we'll pray. Father, in Jesus' name I pray that you'll, you'll help me to deliver this message, that it falls on good ground and it produces what you've had really intended to happen in all of our lives, that it brings forth life. And I pray that it also begins the journey to divine health in all of our lives. No matter what is going on, it may not be today, but we're going to experience a miracle of divine health. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, sometimes when you're, when you're beginning to build a building, you've got you to degrass stuff. You've got to take the grass off. You've got to prepare the saw. You've got to dig a little deep. You've got to set some steel in the ground. You've got to get some reinforcement. You've got to get your boat patterns in place for the steel that's coming or prepare for the wood that's going to go on top. you just got a lot of preparation. But once the building gets moving, it goes pretty, pretty decent. And so the process of what I believe we're going to do last week, this week, maybe in a couple weeks, we're just beginning to degrass some things. We want to take all of the obstacles in our life out of the way so that we can receive from heaven and get the miracle we've been crying out for. How many of you, anybody here been asking God for a miracle in your body so that you can be healed of something so that you can live better than you are right now? OK, me too. So we're all in the same boat, right? There's some things that I don't want in my body. I want to be free of. So here we find this story in Mark chapter five, verse 25. It says, and there was a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had. So if that's the case that she had spent all that she had. Then that means she was poor and there was no other options. There was no more medical treatment. She needed deliverance. And she heard of Jesus. So Jesus was her last resort. And she was getting no more better, but yet grew worse. So that means now she was weakened and even threatened by death. Hope had been diminished. So perhaps she was bitter. And every day she suffered underneath the tyranny of darkness, not knowing how much longer she had to live. Now, many people will never talk about it, but there's the secret suffering that you always go through on the inside world. It's the threats that come your way that can defile you. Because if you believe those, those threats and you don't combat the threats that come to you from the dark side with the truth of God's word, then you'll just allow those things to take hold of you. And those things will lead you into a path of destruction. 
Have you ever learned that if you don't tend to those things and you allow darkness to tolerate, they will destroy you? Tolerate darkness and darkness will lead you into a bad place. I want to be free from all the darkness. I want you to be free from all the darkness. So we've got to begin this journey. So here's this woman. She's in a bad place. But something happened in verse 27. She heard. She heard of Jesus. And I love that term heard because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing. So something happened with the testimony of Jesus. We say it quite often here that the testimony of Jesus is the prophecy of Christ. In other words, it's the story that if he did it once, he'll do it again. So when you look at the, the story of the woman with the issue of blood who had been suffering for 12 years, the testimony of what Jesus would do for her is a prophecy of what Jesus would do with you. So if you question whether or not God wants you healed, this woman had been dealing for 12 years as a daughter of Abraham. She was a child within the kingdom, but yet she was still sick and had been suffering for quite some time. But she heard of Jesus, and when she heard of Jesus, I want to put it this way. Hope presented a new image. Death had presented an image of brokenness and bondage, but when she heard of Jesus, Hope was renewed because she saw something fresh and then faith began to build off of hope. You see, faith was in the point that she began to make her way to Jesus and the only driving force that would cause her to make her way to Jesus is the hope of what she saw in the testimony of someone else. So if you've never heard of a testimony of Jesus healing someone with a blood issue who was, de who was really dealt a death hand, but yet was recovered, you never heard of that story? You are today. You're hear hearing the testimony of Jesus, which is your testimony that God will heal you like he has her. So as you hear this message, may it bring hope to you. So what did she hear? She heard of Jesus. She heard of his healing power. And she heard of God's great physician. All right, I want you to think about that. Jesus is an expert in the field of healing. I don't care what you're faced with. He's an expert in that field. He knows how to cause you to overcome. But he's going to tell this woman something that's so unique about her healing that we have to take hold of. But she heard of Jesus. She moved towards Jesus in such a degree that she came into this press of people. She came in behind because she knew that by her physical condition, she wasn't clean it was like having COVID two years ago, but didn't care. I don't care what anybody says. I don't have a mask on and I'm unvaccinated. I'm coming in for a touch. <laughs> Everybody else in the world would have said, oh, my God, get away from me. But she was on a covert operation. And it was about her touching him, because remember it's not about technically what she did, but it is about her. But it's about what he provides so that we can do what she did. He makes a way. The other day, I got, I got to um, help a friend of mine whose who family member passed away. And my whole time of that funeral was to remind everybody, I don't know the, the person that we buried. I don't, I don't know them. I don't know the fruit of their life. I don't know nothing. I heard some stories. Those stories really don't matter. What matters is what Jesus did for every human being. Just a simple cry of repentance at any single point was an acceptance of Christ into the kingdom. The thief on the cross testifies of that. He was there. He, he deserved to be hanging there. Jesus didn't. He just said, would you remember me? And he says, today, me and you, we're going to see it together. He said, well, oh, I don't know. Man, there are some wicked people in here. Just one cry of faith. So it's the same thing with your healing. It's just one cry of faith. 
press through the darkness. So here's the woman. She presses in. She touches his garment. And this is why she did it. Because internally she had a discussion with herself. For she said within herself, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. I know that if I touch him, I will be healed. And she did. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. Her bleeding stopped immediately because she felt the power of God in her body and she was healed from that plague. She received an impartation of power. How? Because she heard the word. And she believed the hope that the word of God put before her. She dared to believe another image than the image that she previously had. The image that she was carrying before this message came to her was a message of no hope and just disdain for the system because possibly the doctors had ripped them off. Had they, maybe they did their best, but there was no answer for her condition. But then somebody carried to her a testimony of Jesus who was carrying the power of God, and that word created a new image on the inside of her, and she believed the image, which then sparked faith that was already in her. Do you understand that today the scripture says that every person in the earth has a measure of faith? God loves you so much that he's put inside of you a seed of faith. What does it take to get that faith in operation? Believing the hope that he sets before you. Where do I get the hope? You've got to find it in the word. This is why scripture is so important. This is why church is so important. Because it awakens within me the proper image that the word is to provide for me so that I can think like him, reason like him, and not believe the dread that this world has to offer. I don't want to live by the world's standards. I mean, I'm tired of that. I've already found out what the world system offers to me. Nothing. Death, destruction, guilt, condemnation, belittlement. Anybody knows that world? <laughs> you all do. <laughs> Don't you ain't got to raise your hand. We all do. Anybody been condemned before? No, you ain't got to raise your hand. We all have. We all sail in the same ship called humanity. Humility, humanity. Excuse me. I'll get it out. Humanity because we've all sinned. There's nobody in here who's done it right. Most of the times we do it so wrong because it's so wrong on the inside of us. I just want to make this point to you. Shortcuts serving Jesus normally create long journeys for outcomes. You can't shortcut this thing. I know that when we travel, we're all trying to find a shortcut to shave off 10 minutes to where I want to go. You can't do that in the kingdom of God. You can't do things like you want to do it. I can't do them like I want to do it. I got to do it by specific measures. And a part of the measure is that I have to develop hope. How do I get hope? Hope's going to come by the word of God. Hope is going to deliver me from the secret suffering that goes on on the inside that defiles me. I can be free from that by beginning to operate or move on the hope that the word of God sets before me. That's why sometimes I want to remind you that if you want the yeast of the, of the kingdom of God to rise up on the inside, out of you, you're going to have to get close to the fire to provide a little heat to yourself so that the yeast is going to start growing. Come up against the fire a little bit. We say, well, I don't do it that way. Well, what you've done all your life is produce what you got. Are you ready for change yet? <laughs> and I'm not talking like I've arrived. I'm in the same boat. It's like, hey, I've made some decisions in my life and I've arrived where I, I am. And yet I want more of Jesus because I need to I want to come closer to the fire. I still believe that there's some resurrection power that I need to discover. How about you? Amen. And it's not for the other side of life. It's within this life. So no more shortcuts. Everybody say no shortcuts. No shortcuts. You see, I want you to know, I think this is a great thing that I discovered in the study here. It says Jesus knew that the power that surrounded him, the power that surged within him, that power was not there for him. It was the presence of the almighty God. He knew when that woman touched him, that power that was for someone else went through him and touched her. Isn't it amazing that we carry the glory of God 
on the inside of us. And far too often, we're just unaware of it. But, th but Jesus was aware of the presence of God to such a degree that when the woman touched the hem of his garment, power went through him and he knew it wasn't for him, it was for somebody else. And I think that's why the great discovery was, who, who touched me? And I think Jesus took great delight. I think Jesus was like, man, who touched me? Now, you see the world that the woman was living in because the Bible says in verses um, 32 through 34, Jesus looked around to find out who had touched him. And the woman, fearing and trembling, came before him and fell down to confess everything that happened. Why was she fearful and trembling? Because that's the world she was living in. That was the internal structure of her world. That was the real her. Jesus was taking delight that power had been delivered from him to someone only to discover it was a broken, beat up woman. But she was healed. That goes to show you that you don't have to qualify for anything. Let me dot every I, cross every T, just come as you are. <laughs> I mean, it's so beautiful. Man, it's about what he has done for us. And I'm telling you, the hope of tomorrow is found in you discovering what he's done for you and you believing. That's why Jesus says, woman, thy, thy faith, thy faith, your ability to dare to believe. You dared. You dared to believe what you saw. And because you believed what you saw, you pressed through that crowd. You touched me and power was available for you. Now, why did it happen for everybody else? I don't know. But Jesus told you why she got it. Jesus gave us the answer. This is why she got it. And this is how we're going to break this secret suffering. And then Jesus tells the woman, your faith has made you whole, but you got to go in peace. Why is that significant? Because she just revealed that she was fearful and trembling. It's amazing the transformation. He just didn't heal her body. He gave her permission to carry what had healed her body, now to heal her soul and go home completely different. Do you understand this? It's far, Jesus is transforming power. It's far bigger than just the healing of your body. He wants to heal the whole man. He'll heal your spirit in salvation, but the soul in the body needs to come now underneath the authority of who lives in your spirit. So for, let's just take for an example. For those of us who are here visiting today, if you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, the reason that we do that is because I want Jesus to be Lord of my life. Therefore, he takes residence in my spirit. He causes my spirit to become fully alive unto himself and he lives and he dwells with me in spirit. But I still have a soul that's all messed up because of sin. Because of this system that we live in this world. I mean, every time you flip on the TV, there's something there to scare you and to cause you to tremble. It's just there. So I have to know how to now take the power that now abides on the inside of me and I gather these images by the word of God. I see them through the spirit of what God is showing me. I see the hope that is before me. I then move on the hope that I see through the promises of the, of the word of God. Faith is activated and now I can do what I see. I can leave the bondage of fear and trembling. And Jesus says, go home in peace. Go home in fullness. Go home being whole, complete, lacking nothing. So I just want to make sure that you understand, if you dare to believe, your faith will come alive. If you dare to believe, your faith will come alive. And for us here, for me as having the honor for many of you probably for the first time, to be able to share the gospel with you is a great honor. Because there's no pressure here. It's an invitation of grace. I'm just here to tell you that as a 12-year-old boy, when my mama brought the gospel to me, something moved in my heart and I dared to believe it. And it's transformed my life. But it still comes down to this. It's not nothing that I've done that's so great. It's about how great he is towards me that I get to do this stuff. And it's the same with all of us here. The reason that we ask Jesus into our heart is because I want him to live fully alive on the inside of me and to transform all this mess that's outside of my spirit. 
I'm tired of being terrorized. I'm tired of being frightful at night or during the day or getting on the road and have all these thoughts, of these wickedness, and sickness and disease. And Where's peace? Where do I find hope? In him. I find it in Christ. Only in him. And so I want to show you this real quickly. And I made this point to you. I believe that what we're talking about by taking hold of hope is a natural discipline. You've got to begin to discipline yourself because if you don't start disciplining yourself, then you'll never have the release of supernatural breakthroughs. Natural discipline will open a door for supernatural breakthroughs. So these things, even though they seem kind of simple, they're very deep. But it requires attention. So if you want out of the darkness, you can get out. Let me show you this real quickly. In Romans chapter 7, um, verses 24 through 25. But I also wanted to make this note to you because I don't want to skip over this particular note. It says that when the woman with the issue of the blood gave her confession before Jesus on what had happened, she confessed about her uncleanliness. She told everybody about her uncleanliness mentally and physically, but yet in her confession, her confession became a testimony to everybody else around. That's why the word says confess your faults one to another that you might be delivered. She just came out, man, you know what I was dealing with? <laughs> and then that became a testimony to everybody around them. And if somebody took that message and went to share it with somebody else, and the testimony of Jesus became the prophecy they needed. So every time you testify about the goodness of Jesus in your life, all of a sudden that testimony is brought to somebody else who picks it up and brings it to somebody else, and they prophetically carry your victory to somebody else so that that person can be healed. All right, we read this last week in uh, Romans chapter 2, verses 24 through 25. And Paul makes this statement. He says, look, I've tried everything and nothing helps. I'm at the end of my rope and there's no one. There, is there no one who can help me do anything? No one. That's the real question. And the answer is, thank God it is. There's an answer. Jesus Christ can and does. He acted. He did everything to set things right in this life of contradictions where I want to serve God with all of my heart and mind, but I'm pulled by the influence of sin to do something that's totally different. All right, so I got this mess going on. So what's the answer? In Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, the Bible goes on to say, but then at the arrival of Jesus the Master, that faithful dilemma, that dilemma that my heart was broken, my mind is disrupted, that dilemma is resolved. But it's only resolved for those who are entering into Christ being here for us now. You see, it's, not everybody gets in on it because you don't get in on it. But it's available to you. See, you're no longer underneath this contentious, low-lying black cloud. There's a new power in operation. It's in the earth. It's here now. It's the spirit of the life in Christ Jesus. It's the same power that was in Christ, that was on him, that surged out of him into another woman. That power is in the earth now for you. He's like a strong wind. And when that wind blows, he clears the air. He frees you from all this faded lifetime of brutality by sin and death. That sin and death weakens you like the woman with the issue of blood. Sin and death threatens you by death, just like the woman with the issue of blood. Hope can be diminished, just like the woman with the issue of blood. You can be bitter, and you can daily suffer in the darkness, just like the woman with the issue of blood. But God went for the juggler when he sent his own son. <laughs> Woo! He didn't deal with it like a problem somewhere on the outside, unimportant. No, in Jesus, he personally took on human condition. He entered into our disorder and mess, struggling humanity in order to set it right once and for all. Everybody say, I am a part of the all. Sorry if I disturbed her peace. <laughs> I don't try to make babies cry. 
I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, I, I, I'm, I'm delighted that Jesus did it for me. Amen. And you know, you know what the requirement is? Enter into the hope that that word begins to develop on the inside of you. You see, you've got to see the promised land on the inside of you in order to obtain it. You're not going to find the promised land out there yet until you discover the promised land in here first. Then the promised land shows up for you because you don't have no power to get it to you. You just before you know it, you draw closer and closer and closer to enter into the promise. So I'm here to just to share with you today. Listen, the more time you spend studying on healing, like if you have a physical ailment, a mental ailment, a financial ailment, it's a lot of different sicknesses in the earth today. You know that, right? If you begin to study what the word says and look, it's not that difficult. You can go on your phone and say, hey, Siri, give me scriptures on healing. <laughs> it's just that simple. <laughs> you can find it if you want. It. And then you start looking at them, writing them. Oh, look, Siri heard my voice. <laughs> That's why she's laughing. Siri found me some scriptures on healing. That's amazing. <laughs> Can't make that up. <laughs> All of a sudden, you start meditating on that word. It will then, because you're drawing close to the fire, it'll cause you to begin to rise up above the sickness because you'll begin to see the hope that the word brings to you. And then the moment that the word brings you hope, it'll tell you like the word will say, do this. It might say, look, as simple as increase your water intake by three glasses of water a day. You say, oh, pastor, that's foolish. No, because you could be dehydrated. You don't even know that. The doctor can't even identify what it is. All you needed was water because the great physician knew. He's the expert in the field of your health condition. All you need is a word from God. But more importantly, your obedience. Just follow the word. Because remember, if you went to the doctor and you had high blood pressure and he says, take this pill daily, you would do it. So I'm asking you, that, that don't get away from your medicine, but take a gospel yeah. and meditate on the gospel. Take it every day and look at it, allow it to bring forth life in you and then move by faith on what you see. All right, I'll conclude it right there.